Hi, um, so my name is Lucy McKenna and um, I'm a PhD student at the ADAPT Centre in Trinity College Dublin. And today I'll be presenting um, on NASHGEL, an authoritative linked data interlinking approach for the library domain. And this is a follow up on my presentation that I did last year. So just an update in terms of what I've done in the last year. Um, so the plan for the presentation, um, I'll just give a quick little uh, spiel on um, what linked data interlinking is in the context of uh, the tool that I'm working on. Um, a quick recap of what I did at, or presented at SWIB last year, um, and then discuss my progress with NoshGal. So the usability testing that I've done, and the updates based on the usability test results, and the implementation of the provenance model, and the next steps. So um, in the context of uh, my tool, um, link interlinking relates, is, uh, relates to linking related entities across data sets. So interlinking can be done within the data set, but specifically for in terms of how I'm looking at it, it's across uh, different data sets. Um, and then also different degrees of relatedness. So not just um, our same as, but also things like close match, similar to relation and see also. So looking at different kinds of degrees of relatedness. Um, why is it important? Well, it's needed for your linked data to be considered five star. Um, and also it's very useful for data enrichment and knowledge discovery. So. Um, in, rather than just pointing to things that are the same, you can also point your users to other data that may be of interest to them um, based on what they've been looking up. Um, so what is NOSHGEL? Um, NOSHGEL stands for the Novel Authoritative Interlinking for Semantic Web Cataloging in Libraries. Um, and NOSH is also the Irish word for links. Um, the approach encompasses a linked data interlinking framework and a provenance model. Um, and I also developed a process and a graphical user interface that allows users to interact with the framework and the approach um, in order to reduce the need for expert technical or linked data knowledge. Um, and the approach is focused on the specific requirements of information professionals. Um, so example, access to common authorities, use of library vocabularies, um, linking to other library data sets and provision of provenance data. Um, the interlinking framework looks like this. Um, it's a four step um, cyclical um, approach. Um, so the first step is entity selection. Um, so here the user selects the internal entity within the data set that they're working with that they want to create interlinks from. Um, and then following this, they select an external entity from an external data, a data set that they want to create interlinks to. Um, following this is step two. Um, this is the process of interlinking your selected entities. Um, so firstly, you determine the entity relationship um, using natural language terms. Then you view suggested properties based on this relationship, and then you select the most appropriate property to create the interlink between the two properties. Um, following this, you add provenance data and the final step um, is to generate your interlink RDF, your provenance RDF, and a relationship graph that connects the two. And then you download all these graphs. Um, so the NOSH GUI that I presented last year looked a bit like this. Um, the primary resources, you had your URI and a description of the resource. There was a list of um, controlled um, uh, vocabularies and authorities um, that you could connect. They were kind of quick um, access links to these authorities. Um, and the steps for the creating the interlink were presented in kind of a drop down three step um, process. And the output looked a little bit like this, um, where you had your URI, um, your property, and your external entity um, presented in a graph, um, like so. So um, I conducted usability testing in January um, 2019 um, of the um, NOSH L uh, process framework and uh, GUI. Um, and also a provenance data demo. So I hadn't implemented the provenance uh, part of the tool just yet. So I just had a little demo for the participants of what it would look like. 
Um, the participants were 15 inf information professionals. They mostly came from academic libraries. Um, three were from a national library and one was from, or two were from an archive. Um, the usability test consisted of four parts, a pre-test questionnaire, a think aloud observation, a post-test interview and completion of the pursuit questionnaire. So the pre-test questionnaire, um, here I was just wanted to gauge um, how knowledgeable the participants rated themselves in terms of the semantic web, linked data, RDF, URIs and ontologies. Um, as you can see, most rated themselves as moderately knowledgeable um, and nobody rated themselves as very or extremely knowledgeable in terms of the semantic web or linked data, so there were no um, expert users per se. And then five of the participants indicated that they had previous experiment, experience um, implementing a linked data project. So the Think Aloud test, um, here the participants had to complete six, six different tasks using the NASHK El GUI. Um, and as they were completing the tasks, they had to think aloud and sort of say what challenges they were experiencing and what they were thinking about the interface and what um, step they thought was next and what it was that they thought they were doing. And this allowed me to pick up on um, any challenges that they were experiencing. So the first task was to create a new project or a new link set. Um, and one of the challenges that the participants experienced here was that they wanted clearer descriptions um, in the each field of the form as to uh, what information was required and what would be done with the information. So whether it would appear in the graph at the end or whether it was just for uh, user purposes. Um, the second task was adding an internal entity. Um, so there was just some uh, difficulty figuring out which button they needed to click on. Uh, third was to add an external entity. Um, so here the links to the external authorities that I had, they weren't always noticed by the participants because I had it at the bottom of the page. Um, and then task four was to create six interlinks between um, the entities. Um, and some participants um, ba initially found it quite difficult to identify which two entities they were interlinking based on just how they were laid out on the, on the page, um, on the screen. Um, so they suggested color coding might help with that. Um, and then, to, then step five was generating the interlink RDF. Um, so um, when they were looking at the graph, participants suggested adding um, natural language labels to make the graph more readable. Um, and then when they were reviewing the provenance graph demo, um, the provenance graph is quite large. So they suggested having different levels um, at which they could view the visualization so it wouldn't all be presented to them in one go. Um, and the good news was participants were 100% successful in following the framework process, so they were able to uh, complete all the tasks and create the interlink successfully. Um, the interviews then, uh, the post-test interview, so the participants' overall impression was that NASHGAL was easy and pleasant to use and that as they became used to the system, the ease and speed of use increased. And the positives, um, the RDF graphs of the interlinked data added to their understanding of the interlinking process, so they were more aware of what it was exactly they were doing with their data and what uh, they were linking to. Um, the link type selection, um, they found the process, the three-step process, quite useful, um, and that having the definitions of each of the properties um, helped, on deciding, hel helped them to decide on how to express the relation between two URIs. Um, and uh, participants also stated that NoshGal would be quite useful um, for their uh, library data in order to create uh, the interlinks. Um, one of the challenges that they did mention here was that uh, the process was quite time consuming, so figuring out a better way, to, uh, figuring out um, some more processes that could be automated would be uh, very useful. And then finally, the PASUK questionnaire, so that's the post study system usability questionnaire. Um, we chose this questionnaire because it looks at system usability and usefulness, or utility, um, and it consists of 19 statements which the user rates their level of agreement from um, completely agree, which gets a score of 1, to completely disagree, which gets a score of 7. So lower scores actually indicate um, fewer usability problems. 
um, and the scores can be broken down into three different parts, so system usefulness, information quality and interface quality. And across the, um, the three sections, um, we found that there were mild usability issues, so some issues to do with colour coding, issues to do with buttons not being entirely clear um, and the layout at times not being um, entirely clear for the users. So, Based on these results, we made um, a second iteration of NASHK um, this year. Um, so now this is what the resource page looks like. So the internal resources um, are given a color orange and the related resources are given a color blue and interlinks are given a color purple. And we use arrows to indicate which, um, resource, which resources are pointing to which. So it's much clearer as to which entities you're creating the URIs between. And then when you're adding a related entity, so that list um, of um, authorities and URIs that was once at the bottom of the page is now at the side. Um, and um, so users can click on these external data sets to get access to them. We also gave the, each data set a quality rating. Um, so back in 2017, I did a survey where I asked, one of the questions was, um, to information professionals, it was what uh, quality dimensions do you most look for when you're choosing an external data set to work with? And the top three that came up was licensing, completeness, and trustworthiness. So we looked at, um, there was about 20 data sets on the list. Um, these were the top 20 that the users mentioned, that the participants of this survey mentioned that they used. So we looked at these 20 data sets and analyzed the data quality in terms of those three dimensions, and we came up with these um, quality scores. Um, so that, again, is there to help the user to make a decision as to what data set they want to interlink with. Um, we also um, added um, the Ferber model. Um, so here it's, a, it's an optional step. The user can select um, which part of the, which level of the Ferber model the entity um, lies. Um, so whether it's a, a work, a person, or a concept. And again, um, this just helps the user in creating an interlink because uh, the property you might use uh, changes depending on what part of the Ferber model um, the entity belongs to. Um, so the three-step um, process to creating an interlink, we broke them into like three separate uh, pages or like uh, pop-ups. Um, so it wasn't all presented at once, which users found a little bit overwhelming in the first, uh, first time round. Um, so the first step, um, the user uh, creates a link between the two entities using a natural language term. Um, these terms are based on the work of Halpin et al. 2010. Um, so just what kind of relationship uh, might exist between two entities. So whether it's identical, similar, associated with, different to. Um, and then based on the decision that they make, um, different properties are suggested to the user that are appropriate for that relationship. Um, and each... Um, uh, property, as they click on them, they're given a definition and examples as to how they might be used. Um, and also, um, at the bottom there, you can see the search ontology. So if you can't find the um, property that you're looking for, um, there's a live search uh, that allows you to search um, linked open data LOV website for a, a term if you can't find the one that you're looking for, if we haven't included it. Um, and then following this, step three is adding your justification for your interlink, so the why you created that interlink, um, and that's added to the provenance data later, which I'll explain um, in the next slide. And then the output um, now looks like this. So again, you've got the color coding following through. So the internal entity is orange, the external entity is blue, and they have their um, labels. Um, so the, the um, output's a lot easier to read. Um, and then the RDF output, this is just for one interlink, but it looks like this. And the triples are all enclosed in their own named graph. So we're using a named graph as a way to contain um, the interlinks. And I'll explain why we do this when I discuss the provenance graph. Um, so our provenance model, um, we used prov as our ontology. Um, so we used the prov elements to describe the who, where, and when behind an interlink. And then we added um, our own properties and subclasses to describe the how and why behind an interlink. So we added the NOSC prov um, interlink class and the interlink creation activity and interlink deletion activity to 
describe the how, and we added the not prov has justification property to, just to describe the why. Um, and then our provenance model looks like this. So you can see the interlinked graphs, um, they're contained within the named graph, and a provenance graph is also contained within a named graph, or specifically a provenance bundle in this case. Um, and by containing them within their graphs, we are able to point very easily where you can find the provenance for a particular interlink. So using the relationship graph, you can see that if the interlink you're looking at is contained within um, named graph I1, that the provenance for that link can be found in provenance graph P1. Um, so it's just a way of being able to, uh, for the users to, to be able to find the provenance for the, for the interlinks that they're looking at. Um, and the provenance output then looks like this. So it's a massive graph, so we added um, these little plus and minus buttons for e on each of the nodes, so you can kind of um, expand or retract the graph depending on what part that you're looking at, so you're not presented with everything all at once. And the output then looks a little bit like this, and again, we have the named graph here. And then this all makes sense for the relationship graph, where you can link the named graph for the, link for the interlinks, to the named graph for the provenance. Um, so um, after that, the future directions for this project, I'm in the process of evaluating this second iteration of NASC. Um, so I'm doing this via sort of an online questionnaire slash usability test. So where I'm getting the users to create three interlinks using NASC L and then to complete the PASUK questionnaire again afterwards and also to complete um, a quality um, Quest, uh, quality rating um, qu scale, um, and so far I have I have a hundred participants and more and counting, um, and I'm also in the process of conducting a field test of Nashgall in the Irish Traditional Music Archive. So here, um, six information professionals will be using um, Nashgall to create links from their um, it's a music award data set to um, VIAF is their plan, um, and then I plan to provide feedback on these results. Um, yeah, so um, if you'd like to participate in the evaluation that I'm running, um, I have the link and a little QR code here, so you can also try out Nashgall. I think uh, quite a few people here already have done it for me because I contacted you. Um, so yeah, that's everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have enough time for some questions. A quick. It's working? Okay. Um, <clears throat> if I understood well, uh, these tasks I perform one by one. Isn't it? Is there any way, or are you thinking about of comparing um, whole data sets against another data sets and establishing or suggesting links? That would be like an ideal for a next step in terms of trying to increase that automation because doing it one by one is quite t time consuming. Um, at the moment, it's one by one because I'm trying to encourage users to create links, say, beyond same as and beyond um, like exact match. So that kind of requires the knowledge of the information professional and it's kind of um, kind of trying to automate that is quite difficult, but I would like to try and um, incorporate something kind of like how they use an open refine where you can kind of run through, where it'll automatically run through the data set for you and provide those same as kind of links automatically. But um, in terms of those other kinds of interlinks, I think that at the moment that would still be uh, manual. Uh, yes, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. I really like your approach of, of uh, trying to sort of remove the technical barriers and, and uh, allowing the sort of librarians to use their uh, expertise to their fullest uh, in, in, in making the links. Uh, I was wondering, um, does, does your system, does it uh, analyze the mm, uh, the, the data sets, either the, the internal or the, or the external ones, um, for 
what relations already exist uh, there because I mean um, when you when you sort of uh, present all these uh, options from from different schemas to the to the user there mm, the result might be somewhat heterogeneous uh, because there are uh, sort of <laughs> valid uh, valid relations in, in in many many different schemas available and and then various users might you choose differently so is there any any sort of system there the moment no it kind of when you're working with your internal data set um i suppose i'm depending on the user to know their internal data set and to know what um authorities or controlled vocabularies or data sets they've already created links to and what they want to create more links to um but in terms of like the output itself is just the triple so i don't include the label or the description that the user provides in NASC because that would already be are most likely be provided, so I don't want to be creating like duplicate information. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't really analyze to kind of say, oh, you've already created a SCOS exact match to that link um, or to that data set um, or URI. Um, but that would be useful going forward. So at the moment, it, it is dependent on the person being familiar with their own data set. Thank you. Hi. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right. It's a question. Like I um, really like the idea of like removing the <clears throat> like make it as user friendly as possible, and I, and I think you did a, a great job on that. But I'm wondering, like on the survey you made, like pretty much everyone says no something about linked data. But have you tried with people that know nothing? Like, uh, and what's the fix by them? But, but at some point, you kind of show the graphs and all this stuff that maybe if you're like into this, you kind of you understand what it means and, and it means something to you. But I wonder if like a a you know just an average. Uh, you should. I think what you're turning is just like people that go day to day start making this link. I, do they care or should they care? Like, I don't know what kind of like. Uh, so the first usability study that I did, um, I was looking. I did look for people who had some knowledge of linked data. But this second usability study that I'm currently running, um, it can be anyone. So I still ask them to rate their knowledge, um, just so I can know myself um, when I'm looking at the data. So I'm hoping to catch some users who have who rate themselves as not knowledgeable, and then I can look at what kind of interlinks they created and what how they rated the quality and the usefulness of the data. Um, at the moment, it does, like I suppose, when people see a questionnaire to do with linked data, if you already know about it, people are more inclined to click on it. So definitely the vast majority of my participants, um, just from a quick skim through the data, do have some knowledge. But I have seen some not knowledgeable at all. Um, so yes, I'm looking at that and trying to see what those users make of it and whether it makes sense to them as well. Um, at the moment, it's targeting specifically information professionals. Um, yeah, but potentially the framework um, could definitely be applied to different domains. But the GUI that I've developed is for information professionals. So I'm just curious. I don't know. This works. Okay. I'll talk loud. Um, have you analyzed to what degree the people in your participant pool agreed or did not agree? Um, so, whether they agreed with the kind of interlinks that they were creating. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I was able, like, um, I asked them kind of feedback on, like, w whether the interlinks made sense and whether they were useful to them, um, and they were stating yes, and in my current um, uh, questionnaire that I'm running, um, you know, I've also asked for, like, an, any additional feedback that they have about the usefulness. Um, um, Okay. Yes, yeah. 
Um, so whether people chose the same, um, created the same kind of interlink. Um, yeah, for the most part, it was kind of like 80 to 90% agreed on what kind of interlinks they were creating. Um, so people who were slightly less familiar did struggle um, a bit more with that task and had difficult or chose um, different uh, properties, but people who had more knowledge of linked data tended to choose the same interlink and create the same interlink between the resources. So there was a high level of agreement between those with sort of a moderate to high level of uh, knowledge, but then lower, um, there was probably a little bit of guesswork <coughs> involved. So, thank you. Um, what, one la last quick question, maybe. Or I would ask, can we reuse the tool? Is it available yet? Um, it's not available yet. Once I finish this last usability test and then kind of cr make updates on it, um, it'll be available. Um, I have the link there, the interface demo. Um, so it, it has like links to all the resources to do at Noshgel and the, it'll be available there as well. Um, I just need to wrap things up with my PhD and then get things, get okay. things done. Thank you very much. <laughs>